Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. This is Country Road Entertainment. We're back inside the studio practicing social distancing. Today we have on a uh, special guest, J.D. Edwards uh, from J.D. and the Black Stallions. Uh, for those of you who are new here, and a reminder to those who are not new here, um, back in uh, 2019, actually we do it almost every year, we ran a contest where... Um, the, the folks in Arizona got to vote for their favorite top five country music bands. And these are, again, local country music bands. I just want to emphasize on that. And uh, one of our winners that year was uh, J.D. And we're going to go ahead and bring him on the air. We're going to chat with him. Um, we're going to talk about life as a musician <laughs> during this whole uh, COVID coronavirus crisis nonsense. And um, what we should be looking forward to seeing once this is all over um i'm sure they got some plans i mean heck we all do uh we did before it started so there's that and then uh during the whole process here we're we're gonna have um the rest of the band are gonna be popping in and out during the show so i'm gonna go ahead and bring jd on the air now hopefully he's ready for us what up eddie hey how you doing jd man doing good good to see you good to talk to you yeah it's been a minute how you doing doing good so I heard you talking about what it's like being a, a musician right now. You know, it's just like before uh, before you ever got out playing in the bars or anything, just playing yeah. at home, <laughs> learning yeah. new songs. Yeah, you're picking up uh, some new songs while you're at it, I take it? Yeah, that's kind of the plan. Uh, working on new stuff with the band when we can, and then kind of uh, writing new stuff as well. We just put some new music out. So that's kind of the plan. Let's try and take advantage of this downtime for the for the time being. Well, I mean, you can look at it one of two ways. I mean, there's the folks that are going to be uh, sitting around, not doing a whole lot, you know, freaking out the whole time. And I say, well, you know, and they, they tell you all the time on the Internet, uh, learn a new skill, you know, do something different with all that. You know, I, I picked up some neat um, skills when it comes to Nintendo consoles, let me tell you. <laughs> so. I mean, I'm not picking up the guitar, although I've been told to, but I learned how to make sure you have extra games on the NES. It's about a lot. I wish I could get back to some Madden. If it, if it wasn't for uh, trying to play a little guitar and the baby and stuff, I'd be playing Madden all day long. This is what I waited for probably like 10 years ago. Well, you got the kid thing going. You see, my kids are, you know, 9 and 15. You know? Efficient. Yeah, I mean, the worst thing I have to do is just keep them the hell out of the studio. If I can keep them out of the studio, I can work. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They want to come in. And, they want to come in and they want to see all what goes on behind the back, the background, behind the scenes. And I respect that, but I just I don't always have time for that. And I know my daughter is listening, and it's like I love her, but <laughs> yeah. the baby, I don't know how you do it. I mean, there's a few of you mus musicians, like right, you know, during this time, um, a couple actually right before it had kids some of y'all yeah. aren't had yeah. little ones dustin's got yeah. a little one yeah josh has got a couple you know everybody you know got kids out here too so it's crazy yeah. time at home with them this much so it's cool to get that kind of time with the family because you don't usually get it when you're out playing three four five nights a week I try working from home full-time jd the only time i actually left the house to work was the occasional service call otherwise it was just to cover shows yeah. or we should have shows to go to What's that? At least she had shows to go to. At least I was making money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you both. yeah, I mean, if I if you guys aren't working, I'm sure as hell really not. You right. know, I, I've been I've been playing mostly full time. Um, you know, well, I would say like part time web developer, part time content creator, and at least before when I was creating content, I, you know, I was getting a check, <laughs> like you. Yeah, and sure. as soon as those bars and the restaurants when they made the announcement to close. I was shaking. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Yeah, no doubt. I, and that's kind of funny you say that, like us getting to chat and stuff like that. I was thinking, tell my wife today that like the money lost is one thing, but like the time to just like get to see people that you don't always see and hang out and, and BS a little bit and have fun and have fun with your band, like the, all that time's lost too. So that that's what really sucks is like, uh, you know, just – all the good times we had out there as a community and it's just kind of everybody's pulled back into the houses right now. So, so, well, so other than, you know, we have, you, you know, we got the kid and we're learning some new music. Uh, what else? Like if you, if you were to tell me like the top five things that you've been doing to make sure that you don't go insane um, during this time, what would you say they are? What, what would you tell everyone home at home to do? 
like just normal things. We go on walks, we go on uh-huh. drives, just get out of the house. Uh-huh. In a safe way in your own car, go drive around town. It also puts the baby to sleep, so that's probably part of the reason we do it. Um, but man, uh, we, we got a pool out back, so thank God for that. So we just, at least on a weekend, we feel like, well, we can chill by the pool, right? That's not so terrible. But you can't have any friends over, so it really kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. Have you opened up your pool already? I know we have. Uh, for the dog, yeah. Hank, oh, or dog. Dog. oh he's in it all, all the time. He doesn't oh, no. leave it alone. So uh, I think we could get in it now. It's pretty sunny and pretty warm out consistently now. So, ha- um, Have you um, ever noticed any issues with pH levels in the pool after letting your dog in? Because we uh, have- yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. It took us to play with that and it's part, this part of the game and the hair through the filter and all that. Yeah, you know, it's after the last time that happened um, uh, last year, I'm just, <sighs> I'm not going to do it. Not again. It took me two months to get everything back to normal in the pool. Really? Started showing signs of black mold. And yeah. yeah. We're, putting up, we're putting up a fence soon and it's going to keep him from going in there unless we will let him in there. Because he thinks it's his pool, basically. So he's up in it all the time. Oh, well, well, fair enough. You know, maybe at some point he'll let you join once it's warm. Yeah, right. right? I mean, I, I've been in once. I mean, my kids have both been in it, you know. Right. And we got a comment from, um, here from a, a, a seer. It says, <laughs> whenever he listens to country music, it makes him want to buy a farm and cry. You can buy a farm and drink beer and That's right. a party and a bonfire. There's a lot of fun things you can do on the farm. Sure. Too. You know. You know, I got a um, ex brother in law I'm still close to, and he was living on a huge ranch up in Canada, massive. And you know, a few nights a week, he'd have his own private bonfire and he'd drink beer, whiskey, listen to country music. You know, you want out there. It's yeah, well, when you figure out nobody can hear you out there, nobody can find you out there. Well, I think the closest person to him was probably 40 miles away to boot. You know, <laughs> I mean, it would take him. Oh, hell, I think three or four hours to get to the other end of the ranch, which was getting close to, uh, I mean, it, it basically was, it would run north, the ranch towards like Silverknife and the Arctic, all that. Wow. I mean, it, yeah, if they had to go fence or fix fences, it, it could be a long day, you know, three, four hours out there, mend the fences, turn around, come back. Yeah, see, that's probably the farm work that guy didn't want to be a part of. That's mm. why he said he was going to cry if he bought a farm. He didn't want to farm work. Yeah, yeah. Well, get up before that sun comes up. Your work. I mean, I, I got a buddy uh, out in California. He's got a farm now. It's a produce farm. I think he may have a couple of uh, our animals, but he gets up probably, you know, four in the morning. Yeah, he doesn't finish till late at night. Now, I, I, that was the last time I was out there. For all we know, he's, you know, um, cause he, you know, he's about my age. He's probably getting tired of that and he's got more of his workers doing it, but, you know, I, I, I spent, you know, time out there and trust me, I was exhausted. I mean, I wasn't even working on the farm for say, I was working on the house. I was doing some mending on the house back in the, oh, early two thousands. By the time I got out there, they were already coming back for a break. I was like, geez, that's farm life, huh? Not for me. Not, not for you. Not, not that kind of country music with them. Uh, so yeah. let's see here. Uh, so well, how you, wrong with you, Eddie, man? I mean, what have you been doing since this is all shut down? Just kind of your your uh, social distancing interviews and things like that. Yeah, I mean, we started doing. I mean, we were planning on starting this show, um, actually, um, the back in September. And what ended up happening was, well, we we started the planning. I'd say around July, August last year. We didn't actually pick up the equipment for it until just before all this happened and then i and once we went into lockdown i decided well it's time to set up the studio so we were going to be doing podcasting and we're going to have a separate channel for it and at this point i mean although we're going to have some content coming out that is offline uploads this seems like the best way to reach because i was already doing interviews and then the you know the right. music blogs where i would go up with the bands and everything we were doing that but i can't do it anyway so i must well replace those videos with this yeah, that's true. Uh, and and the, the response has been good, so we'll probably keep it going, um, you know, into the far future. Um, and, you know, and, and it also gets a you know a chance that we can actually shout out our sponsors a lot more too and whatnot. Sure. Well, I think everybody's yeah. figuring that out. Like 
they're having to do things differently right now. And yeah. they're saying like, man, you know, we can take this a little bit into when things come back around, how we can use these Facebook lives and stuff like that. People mm -hmm. have been doing, uh, even while people are still getting out to the bars and playing, it's just kind of cool. Like, people kind of reinventing things a little bit and figuring out how to do it. Exactly. So well, and that's the thing too. It's like when, when this all initially started, I was literally staying up almost all night at that point, trying to come up with new ideas and new content. See, a lot of people, you know, have seen me over the years do the, the video feeds and the live music feeds and everything that's been done and we'll still keep doing that. But you know, we're still sitting here coming up with new and original content. If people want to just do what I was doing years ago, fine, knock themselves out. You know, um, but yeah, let, my wife will tell you, I wasn't going to bed sometimes till seven or eight in the morning, take a nap and get back at it. Right. You know, that's, I mean, so, I mean, to me, I mean, this is what I do and this is what I, I will always do. So I have to keep, you know, producing. And if I'm not, you know, and my whole, you know, idea is to always been to support local live country music. And if I'm not creating content, I'm not doing my job. No, we appreciate the platform. It's cool. And uh, people don't realize, like you and I have talked about before, uh -huh. the scene that there is here in Phoenix. Uh, that oh, people yeah. don't realize like what they have is a music scene. Because I've been other places. I've, I've played in other places in this uh, in the country. And it's not the same way everywhere where you've got talented musicians and different kind of vibes and genres and things like that all the way across the board. So it's a cool town to be in. Well, I mean, in truth be told, I, I you know, I would have to say that, I mean, the entire state has a way better scene than a lot of people sure. actually know unless they've come through. Um, just last week we had on County Line from Tucson and they just dropped a new album and it's, and it's actually really good. And it's, 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 it's a nice refreshing change from someone to tr trying to drop something that's been done or that's been overly auto tuned or that just doesn't convey a story, you know, and doesn't have a message. So, um, I mean, Tucson's got some awesome talent. They, heck, there's a band um, out in Yuma that has a massive following. And I used to check, well, they're the only band out there. And I heard them. And they're actually pretty good. And so, I mean, Arizona is, you know, we're really blessed. We really are. I mean, Nashville is great. You got some good acts in Cali and everything like that. But, um, you know, I, I think we have, like, you know, like you were saying, I mean, we are really we're blessed with a good scene and a good handful right. of musicians. And there's also like a really good camaraderie here. Um, we were yeah. talking about that last week between the musicians and just overall in Arizona. Everyone seems to, for the most part, we get this is not a competition. Um, and when it comes to music, if, if, if we succeed as a whole for the scene, we're just way better off. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you, you know, I'm fairly new to Phoenix, you know, within the last four and a half years or so. So a lot of these guys are born and raised out here, have been out in the scene for a long time. So I was worried coming out when I first moved this way, uh, how that was going to all work out. And, and uh -huh. the more I met people, the more I found guys like yourself and other musicians that were really uh, just kind of like they bring you in. They want you to be a part of it. They find you guys to play with, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, um, especially being somebody from definitely the outside coming in i saw how uh, the camaraderie was just like you said so oh yeah i mean it's really i mean you got a lot of guys that have been around for a long time and you know um i've seen you know um the newer folk when as they're getting into the scene um i mean you've been in it for a couple of years now you got some guys that have been around 20 years right, right. and these right. guys are so welcoming to the new people on the board yeah, for sure you know i mean you got fellas like you know um uh, Clint Williams, Marble Heart. He's oh, always wow. there to help. Yeah, he's great. Josh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for sure. Uh, speaking of which, I, I, I see we got Logan on the line. Uh, we should go ahead oh. and bring him in now. How many of y'all are we expecting today? Uh, I mean, I think all three of the other guys, the Black Stallions, I guess you could say that. I think they were all going to pop in at some point just to say what's up. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, and they can all come in. Whenever you want, if you want, if you want to let them in. No, that's good. Well, let's go ahead and bring in Logan. All right. Hey, Logan, how you doing? I miss you. I miss you, Logan. Oh, we can't hear him. Logan, are you on your phone with an external mic? Yeah, we can't hear you, Bubba. Get your phone working before you get on here. You have to test it. Yeah, I know that there's an issue exactly. me the other day with using an external mic on a phone. I've never tried it. Um, however, 
I do know that just like any other app, you have to remember to grant it permission to the. the yeah, the for sure. Uh, Anyways, moving on. He'll be back yeah. later. Probably. He'll be back. So I got a, a Diane here just posted a comment that she loves JD the Black Stallions. That's my Aunt Diane. Oh, hey, Aunt Diane. You know how I grew up in, in Irving. Hi, Diane. Love you. Thanks for coming. And for those of that, you that are new here, be sure, uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, be sure to smash that like button for us. And if you subscribe to us on YouTube and hit that like button, button, drop a comment, that helps us more than you'll ever know. And it shows us that you love or you got some love for us. And we, we definitely like that. Okay, we're going to try bringing in uh, Logan here. You guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. There you, yeah go. you and the road noise. How you doing? Uh, sorry, I'm driving, man. No, I've been working like crazy. Hey, that's good. You have a, you, you still have a day job, yeah? Yeah, I actually deliver all the food to all these restaurants doing carry out right now. I drive, uh, I drive semis for a local uh, uh, food carrier. Oh, right on. Yeah, I uh, service all of Tucson and East Valley right now, and it's just keeping the country going. It's been pretty crazy since all this happened. It was like. Oh the yeah, couple, the first couple of weeks, man. Every all the restaurants dropped out, and you know we didn't know if we were going to work anymore. And uh, uh, then they all kind of figured out the takeout game. And now it's just kind of back to normal. They're all, like they're all ordering the same amounts. We're just as busy again. I mean, people are pretty much just sitting at home eating pizza right now. So that's pretty much all we deliver is pizza sauce and flour and pizza boxes and produce. So people are just literally sitting at home stuck in their faces with pizza freaking out about everything that's actually too true my wife has ordered pizza twice this week i had to tell you her see, that. man it's just crazy it's <laughs> and it's more expensive now i mean a large pie and an order of wings the other day cost us 58 dollars oh my god <laughs> i'm like can't sustain that with no work coming <laughs> Was well, that going to be our tax return going into pizza delivery? Good God! I was like, I, I literally was, I was beside myself. And they've increased the recommended amount, so they initially wanted a ten dollar tip, and I'm like, bro, like I was a pizza guy when I was a kid, you know. Inflation, I'll give you three bucks, four bucks, and we get five. I was like, that is insane, almost sixty dollars for one large, one topping, guys, and one order of wings. Fancy place. Oh, uh, oh, the pizza uh, is amazing, though. I will say that. Cool thing about this job, though, is every place you deliver, they want to give you a piece of pizza. So I am so sick of pizza. I mean, I'm, I still eat it just because it's free pizza. But uh -huh. man, it's been a uh, it's been a pizza pizza heaven kind of thing. So okay, so you're delivering. So. Are you, if you're delivering, you're just delivering food. There's no paper product because if there's any paper product, oh, there's paper product. Yeah, there's paper product too. I do a ton of toilet paper, man. Dude, like, we can't. First week this all happened. We can't find it. Like, people are like, like yeah, college, if you sleep early in the morning, it's there. It's not there. Dude. Yeah, every morning it gets wiped out again. My wife literally has been to Costco, Fries, and Safeway as they open. Or, or I wouldn't say as they open, but at like at Fries and Safeway, I think she showed up at like six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning, even at Target once. Nothing. It went to Costco, nothing. And then someone posted online that Costco has increased the cost of toilet paper by like 25 bucks. I'm like, what uh, in the hell? I was, I I was kind of worried about... Um, hey, May 1st. I was worried about people breaking into my truck and stealing some shit, you know? For real? Oh, yeah, I bet. Logan, May 1st, we're coming back. I think they say May 1st, we're starting to reopen. Oh, are they really saying it now? Because I've been hearing it's going to be so, like... You know, so I guess the government kind of said they're going to give the states the option to do it and start making their own way to reopen. And I, and I think Ducey hasn't like locked us, locked us down, so I think we'll start to reopen it a little bit. May 1st, it's going to be hot out here already. People are itching. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we're really ready for that. I mean, the numbers are still climbing. They're slowly, but well, you yeah. can give us, you can give us some half capacity crowds to play to, and we'll be more than happy to go out and play to. I'm down with that. Quarter capacity. Let's start small. We'll, we'll help them. <laughs> we'll bring them along. Hey, so I, when this is all, 
So when this is all over, do you guys think that like when they open the state back up, do you uh-huh. think that they're that like shows are going to be like kind of weird at first? Do you think like do you think people are going to be not dancing as much and maybe like not ordering <laughs> drinks as much and everyone's going to be spaced out? Being masked at the bar, on. dancing. I yeah, I mean it's funny you should say that because I'm actually um, filming a video on this topic right now. And I'm going to, in my opinion, I think it's going to be in some places very weird in some places it may be required. So, um, and I think some people will probably just go bananas and start doing pardon my French some really stupid shit. I think so, down, Scottsdale is going to go ham. They can't help themselves. Oh, yeah. Scottsdale is going to come I, back. Yeah. Down. Especially like the younger kids. Like right. think about all, yeah. all the college kids that missed out on spring break. All the all the kids that graduated, you know what I mean. They they didn't get to go out and party. All the kids that turned uh, twenty one during all the bands like, that missed all these shows. Like we want to go party. That yeah. too, and like I I always think you know about this and how like for granted I took playing these shows. You know, for getting sure. to play a show like get like just getting a chance to play at Whiskey Row Gilbert is a pretty amazing feat in itself. You know what I mean and. And uh, we got used to it. And now that we don't have it, it's just so crazy to think that we took that 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 for place sure. for granted, man. You just hope it comes back. back. You just hope it all comes it back. Because so it's crazy but, to have it taken away like that. It's not. Well, and that's the big thing, too. I mean, the, the big challenge lies in um reopening so not every place like i think whiskey row may be doing delivery i haven't looked but you know these- i actually ran into uh the owner or the, the manager mike uh-huh. i guess uh, their establishment owns a little restaurant in old town i forget what it's called it's like fresh something uh-huh. but i was delivering i was delivering there and he said that they just reopened for carry out i think uh when i was there he said tomorrow so that would have been monday well, that's good or so that so, so they're doing like a curbside bar, kind of like the place across the street's doing. So uh-huh. just to kind of keep themselves relevant, I guess, and not freak anybody out. Because I mean, if that place closes down, that's pretty much downtown Gilbert's like center, you know, place. Yeah. I, that would be terrible, man. So many of the like, country places. In that big ass building. So so many of the country places, like Tom Ryan's, Handlebar J, like these places all around town are like, you know, staples in their own like areas as country places. Like for those who shut down would be crazy. And the amount of like, well, in some of these places like Tom Ryan's is completely shut. So that brings the issue of, well, when they reopen, okay. Then keep this in mind when they reopen, first of all, we have to make sure we have a staff. Now, some people may have gotten on unemployment or they're still waiting for unemployment or eventually they might get tired of that and they're going to go and they're going to turn around and look for another means of employment. So they may not even come back. So let's just say if the bar is fully shut now and then when it comes to come, it's time to reopen, right? Will they one, have the staff or two, would they have survived this time? So, you know, some may not be able to reopen right. just monetarily wise because they're not like, so like I said, T- Tom Ryan's doesn't really do food. So they, they're not even doing takeout cocktails to the best of my knowledge. And that's the last time I talked to, uh, I, I try to keep in contact with the bartenders as much as possible to see what's going on right now. And they're, they're gone. Um, and I'm pretty sure like Jersey D's is not, you know, and these are places I deal with a lot too, because I book a lot of shows there. And from what I understand, like, you know, Jersey D's who can do food takeout, you know, Thomas, why don't you serve food? Do the takeout, man. Your wings rock. Yeah, man. The hell, man. Like the other day, I didn't realize right he said something that he wasn't. Cause I said, my wife, we're throwing wings from Jersey D's and we'll go out and pick them up. And then we found out he was on it. And then I looked online and he was even saying how he was, he was shut. I'm like, dude, how are you going to get you know through? I also, I also feel like right now that, you know, these places like Tom Ryan's and like the smaller uh, clubs, I feel like those places like JD, you said, they are staples in the community of country music. So 100%. I think, I even think if, if they shut the doors because they financially can't take care of it, I think another investor will eventually step in and buy these these properties because they have they have you know they have a following. They have people that know that's where you go to you know dance. Tom Ryan's is a dance bar. Uh, Handlebar J's I think will be fine, but they're also a dance bar. And I feel like if they if, they, if these current owners right now can't can't find a way to reinvent themselves and do the carry out like you were saying 
Um, I think they will get bought up eventually once this all goes back to normal because, you know, it's it's an opportunity for people to get their hands on something that they probably couldn't have, you know, had, you know, before. Like, you know, I, I know liquor license is extremely hard to get in Arizona. You can't even get a new one. You have to buy an existing one, and they don't even give out uh, – Everybody's gonna play an angle. Every, everybody's gonna play the angle at this point on this whole deal. So it's, it's like, it's like it's it's ships, boys. You know, Crazy, it's completely man. different. Yeah, I mean, Arizona in general, when it comes to liquor, is so strict. You yeah. know, I used to yeah. drive for Budweiser, man. There is so many little small things that, like, like say for example, if an over the road truck comes in to Arizona with a bunch of alcohol. And yeah. they crash. Well, the insurance kicks in and covers that. Or if a pallet dumps and breaks a bunch of shit, they can't sell that to the Budweiser company anymore because the insurance company already bought it. So the law is that in the state of Arizona, you can't uh, buy alcohol and resell it, like on the commercial side of things. So they would just give huh. it away to the, all the employees. It's just very strict rules here with alcohol. And I think people will step up and and buy these bars out and keep it going. It's going to be sad because we've made friends with these people. And, you know, like we know all the, you know, like we know bartenders by name, the servers by name. Right. I think it's, I, I, I think no matter how this, play, you know, like gets played out, it, there's going to be a whole change of hands of, of properties and bars. And, you know, even in the music world, promotion companies are going to change. Bands are going to be going to different labels. You know what I mean? Like the way people travel is going to be different. The way people go to shows, it's just going to be, it's going to affect every industry. And I think music is going to take it pretty, it's going to be weird for music, man. It's because there's going to be rules to it now. It's just going to be weird. Oh yeah. Well, that's what I was telling you. I mean, the, the, the way, the way that we're going to reopen is, is what's really going to be the weirdest part because you, you're, you're going to have, like you were saying, new rules. Think about it. When we came out of nine 11, we had all these new regulations and everything like that. Yep. Okay. So now think about, there will be new laws in place at some point, if not now, at some point there will be. And the scary thing is, is it's, it's going to affect how we socialize for sure. Mm, you know? Absolutely. You know, and, and I don't know if I'm looking forward to that or not, but you know, I will say this, you know, it's, when it comes to being clean and being cautious, I think Lo Logan, is he okay? I think he dropped his phone. There he is. Yeah. Um, good. <laughs> but like the, the things that they tell us to do now, and it's like, okay, wash your hands, soap and water, 20 seconds, use hand sanitizer. Do all these things in my house, we were already doing that stuff. And that's how we, we raised our kids. My nine year old son knows all of that. So when we came into it, I just reminded him one time, I said, you saw that on TV. Make sure you don't forget that we should have been doing a lot of this, right, you know, from the get go, you know, and when everything went into a panic, it's like, did you not own any soap in your house? Have you never bought bleach in, bleach in your life? You're telling me this is the first time you bought hand sanitizer. And don't get me wrong, toilet paper is awesome, but the virus doesn't give you, you know, the need to go to the bathroom. I mean, do you really need right. three? So Nobody it's like, it's going to be yeah, different at the bar now because we're, okay. using, we're in a bar situation. People are drinking it's late at night. People are touching all the time, shaking hands, giving hugs. I five in you and stuff. So you don't even think twice about it. Now you're going to put a little bit of Purell in your back pocket. Put yourself a little Purell after you high five everybody and play with stuff in between sets and stuff. So it's just weird to think about like going to the bar and being so different. What's up, Clint? Clint Williams, Buck Hoss in the house. Did you guys see his Buck Hoss video? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, dude that, that like broke the internet that day. That was awesome. And my favorite part was when he had the sponsors come on. That was, I mean, he had everything from the the um the the lube for your car, the whole nine yards. We're trying to get Buck off yeah. to come out to the studio here to do an interview. Clint did one, and of course that was an interesting day. We had a plethora of weird stuff happen, like. We had power issues with this camera. We had lighting issues, all of since which have been resolved. But it was just like, it, it was like something just went through and just decided to break everything every few minutes in the first half of the broadcast. Even the mixer was down. We didn't even know the mixer was down for 30 minutes. All of our audio was coming straight up. Yeah, oh yeah. But, um,. But anyhow, yeah, so it, it's, oh, it's a trip. 
Hey guys, I'm getting a bad buzz. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump off real quick. I'll jump back on. Later, brother. Ten four. But yeah, I mean, it, it, like I was saying though, I mean, a lot of this stuff we should have been doing. Um, a lot of these things we we we. I mean, just purely good hygiene, staying home. I mean, you get the flu, you stay home. Right. Hell, if you got the cold, if you got a cold, you stay home. You know, I mean, this is all common sense stuff, and and it's almost like uh, we had to retrain everybody on it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, I mean, that's my that that's always been my feeling. So when when it comes to reopening everything after yeah. this, I mean, I think that there are going to be some weird rules into effect, and I think some people are going to be just over and all strange and there's going to be people that don't care and they're going to be out there dancing I, you know it's going to be really interesting to see what happens and you know unless it's regulated i think you're going to have some people that still won't leave their home they're terrified then you're going to have other people that are going to go out and be cautious which they should have always been slightly cautious then you're going to have the people that just full-on jump in hit you know you know yeah. be first and they're they're going to end up probably sick in my opinion but hey, well, that's right. America, though free choice that's right you know, welcome to you can choose to stay home. Like I said, we'll work them in little by little if we have to. You know, whatever they can do to just let us get out there and play. We'll go out doing little trios on patio if we need to. It'd just be funny to do it again. You know, that's one thing we've been focusing on during this time too. Is you know, JD's. You know, in my opinion, JD's got a lot of good songs, and um, you know, we've just been so busy playing that you know, like we we do our work. You know, as a band should uh, off the stage, but you know, when you're older, you got families involved. It's harder to to make time for this kind of stuff outside of playing shows because that's you know that's our job. But um, uh, JD put out a couple songs on on Spotify, and I was thinking this would be the best time to do it right now when everyone's home and like has to listen to it. There's no there's no show to go to. There's no it like we had distraction. To we're like, oh, we should put these songs out. We should do this, but we're always playing, 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 playing. And all of a sudden, we were sitting down for a little while and saying, like, oh, hey, we could release these songs. We could put some of this out. Kind of like we were talking about before, Eddie. People reinventing themselves and doing the Facebook Live stuff and stuff. We're figuring out different ways to do it. So that's cool. We can't get on stage, but we'll find a way to get some music out there. You know. Oh, I'm still working on getting that venue situated. I, I'll tell you off air what is going on in it. It's not. The venue per se, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, but we should have it secured. Otherwise, here's what's going to happen, and JD, you're going to be the first to hear it. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is we are going to clear the furniture out of my great room, and we're just going to bring the band here. Yeah. Already, yeah. already cleared it with the wife. Um, band comes in, sets up the equipment. Oh, we've had bands in here before, so that's not kind of an issue. Logan's been looking for parties, uh, house parties this whole time. Well, see, that's, that's what so, you know, I actually did tell them that, that are musicians, and they said the only downfall of that is there's going to be a lot of beer cans here, and I, I frankly don't care. So. <laughs> that maybe the cops show yeah. up. Nah, I we've had, um. Uh, well, we've had a couple of private acoustic sessions in the house, but we've had, I think, twice, I think we've had live music in the backyard up by the pool. And, you know, what well, I always do is I eat back then. I, what's that? If you have us play. We are, I'm going to, I'm just going to go out and say, I think we're the loudest uh, country band in Arizona. No, just don't break you my You can wife. argue best, but I'm going to go ahead and say loudest for sure. Well, loud is not always good, man. <laughs> Got to remember good. that. <laughs> well, we can definitely claim loudest for sure. Yeah, we can definitely claim loudest for sure. Oh, oh Clint was busting into the subject. We'll yeah, yeah. Clint, don't put it in the universe. <laughs> That's what I'm excited to get back to it, though, man. Oh, I mean, aren't we all? You know, but if you guys are down, I think that's what we might do: is start doing the virtual shows here, and we're going to be rocking like three to four cameras. We, I mean, you know, we have the equipment. What's funny is, is that we were going to break out the three to four camera angles and the new sound system that I have, and then everything went to hell in the hay basket. Basket, because every I don't know if you guys have been following us for a few years. Every few months, you'll see that we kind of level up on equipment. So. Right, right. Yeah, so short of going into like high dollar, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar stuff, we're pretty much as you know the best you're gonna get at this point in terms of you know 
you know, shooting live and everything like that. I mean, if I want to rock my own studio, like if I had a full size studio, like, um, what is it? BX three or BX three does in North Phoenix. That's my dream. Oh, we lost Logan again, but my, I mean, and don't get me wrong. My, if before this all started, I was actually starting to shop for a, um, a suite in Tempe and we were actually going to move it out there. Um, or at least build us a, a stage or a, a set where we could have, um, we could ho host the, the talk show. We could host right. um, live, live shoots or just do our demos. Cause I'm sure you guys know we do demos and photography. So we were going to have the option to do it in the studio as well. And then all this happened and I'm like, I'm not going to pay right on that. You know, Oh, here's guy. Clint's laughing. Here you go. <laughs> No, he was just saying that. Hey, boys, what it is? What's going you know, on, man? Around that bars aren't going to be paying bands what they used to. Hey, Logie Bear, how's yeah. it going? Logan's connection's whack. Just parked oh, on the side of the freeway talking to you guys. Not surprised to hear that. I just got done teaching wow. guitar lessons. I was teaching some children some Seaver Avon lessons, actually. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You giving lessons? Online? Uh, yeah, I just was uh, uh, FaceTiming, actually. It's working out all right. I have, like, a few little, like, little kid funny-ass students. It's been kind of funny to deal with because I can't be like, no, don't do that. <laughs> it's like, all right, just take your time saying ram rambly fun little kid stuff. It's fine. I'll be here when you're done. I'll show you what the note is. <laughs> Very good. Were you, were, you, were you doing this at your home? I am. Yeah, I mean, I'm in my uh, living room right now. Oh, okay. I have a little setup here. Got my little amp set up and stuff like that. For anybody who doesn't know, Logan, Logan's a drummer of the Black Stein. Gabe is our bass player of the Black Stein. Gabe the Black Stein. So thanks for saying this up, y'all. JT. JD. Not JT. JD. Yeah, my, my daughter was walking around the house today going, is it JT or JD? I'm like, yo. <laughs> It's like Katie. Explain it to people as you just say it's like Katie, but with a J. Katie with the J. Then they get it instantly. Jady. I was going to bring her on the air. Jady, like Katie, oh, but Jady. Yeah, if you say it was the worst way to explain that, but it works. It helps us sound right. You got a uh, Rachel in the chat room. Can't wait to uh, see you guys play. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, I, cool. I mean, that's like an amen. I think we all want to see all the boys, all the bands, oh, everybody cool. go back. You know, it'll be cool, man. I I saw Clint's uh, comment there about worrying about pay and stuff like that. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think we'll be happy to get out there and play to an extent, but. I mean, what are you saying? I mean, there's definitely a strong possibility because there's so much revenue lost right now. Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you're, you're running a 50-50 chance. So let's just say, you know, some of the venues that we were talking about that are completely shut, that they don't serve food, they um, are not doing uh, takeout cocktails, for example. So they're going to come out. They've, they've got months and months and months of lost revenue, what have you. They may not even afford, be able to afford to have um, music right off the cusp so their option may actually be oh, so hey true, we're going to yeah. offer you this or we're just going to have to wait i mean i'm just saying i mean i don't want to put it out there, but that's not what it says. well i think we can keep losing both of those guys that's fine they may pop in and out don't worry about them i guess <laughs> uh but yeah you know we'll just kind of see what we can do but we were talking about people like kind of whether they're going to come right back out to the bars or not we kind of need them to come out to the bars so the bars can make money and afford yeah. to, like have a south of play and, and the venues around town in general uh all over the country i mean so the country thunder got moved to october i don't know how that hurt people or hurt promoters or money lost even though they moved it you know so people are still time is money you know time went by people lost money no doubt so it's gonna be interesting to see how that changes all that see well then that's the thing too because they rescheduled um country thunder for halloween so i'm actually curious to see i heard people were actually who still when they made the announcement people were actually starting to like even with the new date they were planning on selling their tickets 
Yeah. You know, just because of the timing, it's, yeah. you know, it's October, November, uh -huh. it's going into the holidays. It is a holiday weekend. What are you going to do? Ditch your kids? Leave you your know? kids at home. They can trick or treat with uh, an older neighbor kid. Come to Country Thunder and hang out. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I know. Man. I know on my end, I could pretty much kiss my, my press basket goodbye. <laughs> well, no, and that's interesting, too, to see, like, what, what they're going to be able to give uh, to the bands and to people. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, like you said, like, you know, we, we're going to play it, and we're going to be out there playing a Country Thunder, but we, you know, that is Halloween, and so that's missing, you know, taking the kid, going on Halloween and stuff like that, which wouldn't have been a normal thing. So right. we'll change things for the whole next year for sure. I think it's, I think, I, I think here's what I think is going to happen. Come September, we're going to start t taking a betting poll and we're actually going to see who's actually going to, to show up and who's, who's going to be scalping them tickets. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just going to call it how it is. I mean, well, it's, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, I saw somebody say in a country thunder forum, they said if uh, country thunder got reinstated for this weekend, who all would still go? I would. So there's a bunch of people. There's crazy people out there. And I guess that's like what we rely on, I guess, as the band. We need people that want to go out and party because that's what we are there to do with them kind of thing. So No, I agree. And, and I think here, you know, and the, the other thing too is like with me, I'm pretty sure I'm, you know, I'm trying to be the, the, the fellow who's, kind of like it could go this way or that way but right. chances are we're going to get closer to it my wife will be like just take your pass and go and i'll be like i'm good well ho hopefully this is dying down by october for sure and we're feeling a lot better by then i mean i hope yeah. here in the next couple of weeks especially arizona starts to feel better about it and we can at least i mean we just want to get out of the house and go sit on a patio somewhere and have a drink and you know brunch or something you know so right. even on a personal level we just want to be able to go do something so well, I mean, well, I mean, I could tell you like even lately it's, you know, I don't know about you, but I mean, we're getting a little twitchy over here. It's like, yeah, I, yeah. I haven't, you know, I've snuck out once or twice, you know, um, like recently I had to go to church, but it was like, you know, just, you know, social distancing, pick right. up some stuff and then get the heck out of Dodge for Easter. But um, before that, I couldn't tell you. The last time that I was out of the house and I was literally starting to lose my mind and my yeah. wife and I are kind of bickering over stupid stuff. And it, it's just, it's, it's, it's stupid. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, but you know, so I, I, I can't remember, I'd have to go look at the um, receipts from when I was up at in Prescott with Southbound. That's a basically how long I've been locked up. And I want to say that was February, beginning of February. Wow. So I have, uh, I literally hadn't drove cool. in two months. I got my truck the other day. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm, I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. It's like, it, it was totally, it was weird. Yeah. It's weird times. That's why I'm saying if they do another couple week, month long shutdown, man, people are going to go crazy. We got to get out there. And be well, a, little bit. I, a lot of States I thought still had, it did another extension through May. That's why I want to check. Yeah, they did. They did, yeah. but I think, I think they're giving them the right to open up if they want to. Arizona, Texas, some places like that, I think, are uh -huh. talking about they want to open, I think. Really? Michigan's okay. marching on people, so Michigan's marching on the state house because they want to reopen, so that's the flip side. Gotcha. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm going to hope for the best, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. You know. It'll be all right. We'll all figure it out just like we did during this time too, you know. Well, now if oh now we got Rob over here. I just noticed he's been in here. Hey Rob. Hey, what's going on, guys? How are y'all? Yeah, good, good, good to see you. Uh for anybody who's uh, not familiar again with each one of the band members, Rob is the lead guitar. What's up, Rob? Hey, what's going on, brother? I miss <laughs> good. You. I miss your musk. I know. <laughs> Wow. Dude, we played a Facebook Live like two weeks ago or something, and we hadn't seen each other in like two weeks before that. And so now it's been like another two weeks. And usually it's like four nights in a week we see each other. Uh -huh. So it's so <laughs> like to th like when we get back together, it's like riding a bike, but it's like crazy to think. Like when we all look at our instruments, like 
do we ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're working. I, know, yeah. I also feel like there's like a, almost like a bromance between all of you guys, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, we have I'm a lot of that vibe, you know? time to hang out usually. Uh, yeah. That's like, I mean, like those are probably our closest friends is each other and our bandmates. You know, we see each other all the time. And so it's right. really weird for it to be not like a gradual thing, not like a seasonal, like it's summertime. It's really hot out here. A lot of places aren't doing the same music or whatever, like just gone. And you don't get to hang out with each other anymore. It's just so crazy, you know. Like Logan said, you take it for granted because you're like, night four, you're like, man, I'm tired now. But now you're like, give me four nights, give me ten straight nights. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, definitely missing it. That's for sure. Looking what are you been doing? Back out there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. There was a little. Lag. Oh, no, that was all. <laughs> oh, okay. There was a little <laughs> lag, and then I accidentally started talking over it. It was totally my bad. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what um, what have you been up to this whole time? Do you have a day job um, that you've been doing, or? Uh, yeah, so I do. Yeah, I work as a recruiter during the day. I've been mm-hmm. remote this whole time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so I'm. <laughs> I, I took a break from my uh, my end of day day job duties. You know, hop on here. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, you know, trying to do little things on the side too. I plan on doing another Facebook Live. Uh, thing this this uh this coming you know weekend so right on just uh and try to, try to play. Play. Still still do something you know <laughs> <laughs> so trying to increase my followers on instagram <laughs> instagram is another evil in itself i'm just gonna say yeah. that it, it's weird i mean i i've i i my followers are going up but the one thing i can tell you from what i've learned is the key to Instagram is follow. The more you follow, the more it'll follow you back, and then you can get your message across. And make sure that your thumbnails for whatever you're posting or for your your um, actual, uh, uh, well, it's not much of a profile image, but at least the, the profile image, make sure it's sharp. Um, you know, right. the, you, you, all those little things, I would say, and just make sure that your whatever you're posting is relevant and they're actually going to, to say, look at it. Um, yeah. You know, there's, you know, and I think there's a way you can look at your analytics. I forget. I have everything tied into Facebook with Facebook pixel and everything like that. You know, big shout out to my buddy, Justin, for showing me that. Although he needs to come over again because I think I screwed it up. You know, that's easy to do. Holy Christmas. It is so complicated. (laughs) I'm like, like I went and I did all this business verification stuff, all this stuff the other day. And for whatever reason, my main account doesn't have full admin access to my groups anymore. Even though it says that it does, if I try to do any posts, I actually had to go and switch back to myself and then approve it in Facebook. And I'm like, well, this can't be right. So, and it's like, oh, great. Extra work. That's exactly what I want. It was just feeling that all day. That's great. (laughs) So, So now, um, you know, um, moving forward um you know let's you know hoping that we actually do get out of this soon do you guys have any you know anything still in the books for the fall any any plans are we doing any touring or is everything still in the valley what's going on we got all of may booked up so Uh may is ready to go if they if they want to open up uh you know we got stuff booked in june we had a wedding in march yeah in a march they got moved to june or july now so especially wedding stuff or private stuff like that, any kind of uh, like corporate things that we had, they just kind of shifted it to later in the year. So that kind of worked out. Um, but yeah, we have some stuff still with like Bourbon Jacks and what that through the rest of the year will be at, at with Real Gilbert. So I mean, we're gonna, we just gotta see which bars I guess are gonna continue to keep, like Clint said, being able to keep bands in there and whatnot. And we're gonna have to adjust our schedule a little bit based on that. But uh yeah, I mean, we got dates booked, ready to go. So as long as they open the state, we can go play. And, and that's awesome. I mean, I know like with, you know, I do the the booking and everything for Highway 260. And we had most of the year completely booked. And it's starting to look like, at least for us, that a, I'd say a lot of them are actually going to get shifted possibly towards 2021, unfortunately. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many shows offhand that everyone had. I mean, the listings we do on our website is primarily now handled by Mrs. Smith um, because I'm too busy doing this stuff. But 
um, she'd be able to tell you more offhand, like who had what, but I can tell you just from think about the average band had, you know, 10 to let's just say, say you know, 10 to 15 shows on average. Right. The, uh, yeah. And they got to be pushed somewhere. You're not going to, it's going to be really hard to shift them later in the year if the venues were already booked. So that's why, you know, some of the stuff we're looking at, is going to be going into 2021, you know, and that's not, horrible but the, you know we would still prefer to get back to work and you know get some more stimulus checks coming out i guess hmm. yeah well we already got ours you know <laughs> most people got them actually i think at this point that's good man. but i mean that's a, the you know it's like i was saying man the bars need to open the restaurants need to open the venues need to get open we need to get you guys back on the stage and then i can get back to work too we're gonna make it about me no i'm kidding i'm joking but yeah, I mean, honestly, until you guys go back to work, I'm stuck here in the studio. So no, I mean, and I think a lot of us like kind of feel more, uh, like together on it now, like even with the bars and the bartenders and the, and the, uh -huh. third of the bars, like, I think we're all going to like come back in together. Like we all like bring it to get, like if, if one of us isn't working, that means none of us are working. So like, we all got to be in it together to, to make these venues work. We're the entertainment. There's servers and bartenders, and we're all gonna be happy to see each other when it's time. So it'll be cool. Well, and that and that's that's the best way to say it. We are really, truly all in this together. And sure. the sooner we comply, and they feel it's safe, then they can open us up, and we can get back to work, and we can move along our you know our uh, merry way. You know. Um, yeah, they push country thunder. So like we were talking about. So yeah, yeah. We, we were supposed to be there this weekend, playing a couple of the side stages. <laughs> And some acoustic gigs but uh so they push it to october so hopefully you know everything's good to go there we get to go play it still it's just kind of different timing and kind of different scenario we'll see how it works but like you said it, it's not terrible things are getting pushed off but it's just gonna be different you know well i mean in hindsight being 2020 let's just say let's just say that you know we're in better shape by you know the october november realm right. so that was actually not a bad idea on their part because they pushed it out far enough to the where it, you have a more it's more likely that we're going to open up you know later than sooner but right. that's a good enough a safe enough gap to guess that by october or november the country will be open and safe again you know? well and like comfortable like you said people will finally be comfortable maybe to get back out there right exactly you know so I mean I don't I just I say we hope for the best. If you're religious, pray. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know. even if you're not, you can pray. That's cool. That's right. That's right. You know, good thoughts, good thoughts. But you know, I, I I'd say I mean we we have a safer chance with that one. Um, you know, I know I have tickets for some shows, and sadly, you know, one of them was for uh, Josh Turner, and that has already been rescheduled twice. So I highly <laughs> doubt that I'm actually going to be able to use that specific one you know I, I i got a feeling they're gonna end up just canceling it at this point and i don't you know that's gonna just suck but i don't know if you heard it, it was it was first canceled way before this because they had um an accident with the bus oh right right that's right yeah. so you know so then they had rescheduled it and it was rescheduled for um it was just a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago and um they 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 gave up on it and they're like no we're not going to do that um you know due to the coronavirus and i'm like okay and my wife lets me know you know she says here's the email and i said i i don't i don't see i don't see him rescheduled again because he's already got he only had a handful of shows he had to reschedule and to reschedule him twice i don't know and i know that he's josh turner is not the only one out there that's done that so that's also the, the, the next question how many of these tours where they had rescheduled dates or even dates during this small window how many of them are actually going to get rescheduled or just pushed completely until the next tour? Right. And you just have to do a new tour and you have to like work out new dates kind of thing. Cause exactly. you're going to push them on top of next, next, uh, you know, seasons, festivals and things like that that are coming back around. So, uh, like, I, like I said earlier, it's going to be really interesting to how this, to see how this is all going to play out, you know? And like I said, I still personally feel that when everything reopens, I think we're going to see how people like to a certain extent, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I think people are going to interact differently, at least in the venues, at least in the smaller yeah. ones, you know, for sure. And, and, and again, I wouldn't be surprised 
if in the end we have a um, just a, some regulation in place, even too, you know, they may actually say, okay, you know, they may look at what capacity each bar had before and may even slice it in half and say, everyone's got to stay apart. You don't know. That'd be crazy, man. Wouldn't that be wild? I mean, you know, picture what <laughs> I think Tom Ryan's has what, 160 or something like that. Imagine that sliced in half and everyone's got to, unless they're, you know, well, they, you know, and if, if they did that to those bars, think about the venues all around town that have acts come through, like you said, like a Josh Turner or something. Think of how tightly packed people are in those concerts and those small venues and, yep. and the Van Buren and places like that. And to, to thin those out would really change the vibe of those kind of nights, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. It's, it's going to be, well, and that's the thing too, because you figure when you went to these venues and you went to the bar and you went to see a live show, there's a certain level of intimacy and this is part of it. Right. Right. But imagine if that actually was taken from us, like what, how would that, like, how would people handle that? How, how would, how would people like, you know, take that? Would they even want to go anymore? Or are we going to be looking at an ear where people are just like screwed? I'll watch from home. I don't know. Right. I, I personally, I don't know if like, in my opinion, I don't think we're going to go back 100% to normal, you know, but. Not right away, not right away, but we'll see. I guess people uh, are like fearful a little bit of each other, but I think we'll, we'll, each other. we'll work it out. Yeah, okay. But until then, you know, we're just getting ready to play. When it comes time, we're gonna be ready to jump off the stage and go nuts, you know, because we're just like itching to get back up there. So. Well, keep practicing and keep learning them new songs. Might as well work on that playlist. Check out, if, if y'all are getting on Spotify at all, we got a couple songs out now, uh, Country on the Radio and uh, Where This Night Leads on Spotify. So a couple original songs out there now. Uh, feel free to check those out. That's what we're trying to do as well as get some new music out. Uh, we're in the studio doing a new one right now, and we got a few more ready to release. So just trying to, like, you know, kind of like you're doing the content, is just trying to put some different content out now, switch right. it up. Put our, you know, now's a good time to put your own music out and kind of get that ball rolling and see where we can go from there too. So it'll be fun. Do you have a website? You want to go ahead and plug that, plug your Facebook page or anything? Uh, JDEdwards.com, uh, JD Edwards Facebook, JD Edwards Instagram, all that. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, all those. JD Edwards on there. You can find us. JD and the Black Sands, we're out playing all the time. Rob, thanks for jumping on, man. Appreciate it. Good to yeah. see you. Good How to see you, Rob. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's not another, another what I think when was the last time I saw you guys? Has it been like four months now? Three five months? months? Four or five months. I think we're at Tom Ooh. Ryan's. We saw you at Tom Ryan's. We talked and we were like, Oh man, the scene is about to be. And you and I were like, the scene and you got this going and that going. We're talking to all these people and then yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, though, our following has actually increased all the way um, around this whole time. So people are finding a new way to view it. You know, everybody still wants to see it. They still want to follow what's going on, so they're finding a new way to do it. That's all. Yep. No, nothing wrong with that. Well, guys, it was great to see you. Um, again, hopefully, like it, yeah, yeah. Just stay healthy, stay alive, take care of your families, practice social distancing, sure, sure. and hopefully, we'll see you sooner rather than later. Yeah, thanks for everything you do, Eddie. We appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you as well. All right, bro. Sure. See y'all. So long, guys. Later, y'all. Hey, Clint. Thanks for saying that. Appreciate it. Hey, folks. So that was a lot of fun. That was, again, that was JD and the Black Stallions. Um, they were voted one of the top five um, best country bands um, in Arizona for 2019. So that was pretty cool to actually have them on. Um, like everybody else, you know, they're um, with their families right now during this time. They have day jobs. I mean, they're just like you and me, and they're still um, just trying to get through it like we are. So, you know, stay home. Uh, do, you know, do what they're saying. Just, you know, practice that social distancing. Wash your hands. And then hopefully before, sooner rather than later, we are going to be back out there they're going to be playing and we'll be back there shooting those live film or video feeds from you know, the actual bars and 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 that'll just be great heck i'd like to go back to my regular work so uh if this is your first time here um 
on uh, YouTube, definitely hit that like button on either platform, fast Facebook or YouTube, but hit that subscribe bell or one button. And then the um, notification bell right next to it. That way, every time we do another show or an upload a video, you're going to get a notification of it. And a lot of these videos are a lot of fun. So we do the talk show. We also do these uh, music vlogs where generally we travel with the bands now because we can't travel with them. There's a few different things that we're doing, but definitely, you know, Give us a shot. We're a lot of fun. Uh, this is a husband and wife team. The wife is not on the talk show, but you do get to see her periodically. And we'll actually be back in a few days. We have a, a couple of guests coming up next week. Um, one of which we'll go ahead and announce is uh, Josh Roy. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you're just now joining, go ahead and catch our last video with uh, County Line. They just dropped a new album. They're out of Tucson, Arizona. Really talented uh group of folks great fiddle player um she's definitely worth checking out like a lot of talent in that band so um if you before you go away you know switch over to that video check it out um other than that folks i hope you're all great you're all safe and we'll see you soon and have a great night all right